Now code 446 deals with this guy right here. This is the EVAP canister vent control valve. If you take a look, it's attached to the canister, which is right here. Now this happens to be at the rear of the vehicle. Here's your rear driver's side wheel. And right behind it, you'll find the canister. And attached to the canister, we have this vent control valve. And real quick, I just want to point out, really there should be two bolts here. What happened years ago is uh, this one snapped right off, as you can see, and I had a small evap leak. And to fix it, what I did is I just used a gasket maker here, and it just sealed everything up, and I was okay. So if you're getting code 446, you need to check a couple things, and we'll run through each test. Number one, we want to make sure if power is getting to the harness, because if it isn't, then obviously this won't work. Number two is you have a hose here. You want to make sure that the hose is free and clear. And to do that, you just pull off the hose and just follow it. Make sure it's clear. What you could do is, is just remove the hose from the vehicle. Uh, and if you want, if you don't have an air compressor, just attach a, uh, a hose, a water hose, and just see if water drains through it. If it does, great. If it doesn't, it's clogged. Uh, so that's a very easy thing you can do for the rubber hose. Uh, number three is we'll test the vent itself. And number four is you have a pressure sensor, which lives right here in this case, which should be attached to the frame rail, uh, which I have to get back on there. And actually, in fact, I have a video on this um, showing how to test it. So I'll splice in that video at the very end. But let's go ahead and just run these tests. Let's make sure, number one, that power is getting to the harness. So to do that, there's a little tab up here. These could be really tough to remove sometimes. These are waterproof uh, connections and they can really get on there. But press down hard, there's a tab, and then push back. And that's it. Don't pull on the wire itself, just pull on the body. So what you want to do is turn on the ignition key to the on position. You don't want to crank the car, just turn it on to the on position. Okay, to the on position here. Don't crank it again, just turn it on. And what we'll be using here is just a very basic multimeter. And we'll be using the, of course, the voltage setting. Now before we test the voltage, what I'm going to do first is attach a good ground point. Now this is the negative terminal coming from the multimeter. And let me switch hands here. This is the spring for your e-brake. So I'm just going to insert it like so. This is a, a very good ground point. And then back here at the harness, you have two terminals, number one and number two. In this case, we need number two. And just touch with the positive lead coming from the multimeter, touch that terminal. And you should have 12 volts worth of power or battery voltage going to this sensor. Now, if you're not getting a reading here, first make sure that you have a good ground, because if you don't have a good ground, that's this guy right here. If you don't have a good ground, then you won't get a reading, obviously. The other thing is to check these wires back here. If these wires are okay, then you have to check the fuse. In this, excuse me, you have to check the fuse, which in this case is a 15 amp fuse. So, but usually it's just that these wires back here corrode or there's a splice somewhere. So you just need to uh, repair it. Now, if this is okay in your case, then let's go ahead and test the, uh, the valve itself. As you can see, we have two leads running from this vent. Now, it would be a heck of a lot easier just to remove the vent from the canister, but as I explained earlier, I had to apply this gasket maker because I had a small leak, and I just don't want to break the seal. So what we want to do is apply 12 volts worth of power to verify that this uh, valve is working. Inside the valve, there's a plunger that moves back and forth, uh, depending on what the car's computer or the ECM tells it to do. So I've uh, jerry-rigged a power source. If anyone out there is in RC, this happens to be a LiPo battery pack. Usually it's 11.1. I actually checked it's 11.8 volts right now. So this is more than enough power. And just be careful. You don't want to cross the lines. But as you can hear, I'll do it again. So now it's off. And now it's on. Off. On. So we verified let me just disconnect these guys. We verified that this valve is working correctly. So now we know power is getting to the valve. We know that the valve is working correctly. Number three, as I explained earlier, just check the hoses. Again, make sure there are uh, no leaks. Also, a good due diligence would be to replace these hoses as well. I actually did a couple years ago. 
Uh, I didn't have any leaks, but hosing is inexpensive. You just cut the sides and and, re and replace them really, and it just it just cuts the confusion out. If you ask me, just replace all the hoses back here, um, just for any future problems. That's the third thing. The fourth thing is you have a pressure sensor. And I do have a video out there showing how to test this uh, sensor, so I will splice in the video right now. You do need the multimeter again, and you also need a vacuum gauge as well. So that's what code 446 is all about. If you ran through all four of these tests, I'm sure you diagnosed where the problem was. And uh, we'll see you next time.